Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 44 of the platform specific series of Z80 tutorials. We're looking at the Spectrum Next again this time. It's a Spectrum here because I've not got a new icon yet. Now, last time we had a look at the um, ULA Next, which is this new special feature which allows you to re map the color attributes and enhance the colors. Now, unfortunately at the time I hadn't fully understood the Spectrum Next colors because I was discussing a way of using an existing screen and recoloring it. However, the way I showed wasn't really very good. There's a much easier way, which I've now learned. So we're gonna look at that. It's very easy to use. So we're gonna be recoloring with that. We're also going to be looking at the low res mode, which is also known as I can't pronounce that mode, um, Rad Dust G Minion mode, maybe, something like that. Anyway, the low res mode is going to be a lot easier on my tongue, so we're going to call it that. We're going to learn how to do both. My AcroSprite editor, which is as always free and open source, can output the low res mode. That's what I've used to create the binary data today. And we're also going to be looking at how to print some simple characters, hello world, that kind of thing, in the low res mode. So, you know, a few things here today. We're going to be going through them. So let's take a look. So first of all, the ULA recolor. So here's the spectrum screen, here's the recolor spectrum screen. We're also going to look at changing the window size and finally we should be seeing some scrolling but it doesn't work. Now it's a bit difficult for me to tell whether that's an emulator bug, a documentation mistake or me being a dumbass, any of those are possible. I think maybe it's an emulator limitation at this stage but anyway we're going to go through the code that should work and we'll see what happens. So anyway as before, we're loading in a sample screen here. That's just the um, Chibi Akamas title screen here. We're changing the border to black. We've got these pauses in place just so we can see the different stages. And now we're going to recolor the ULA. It's very easy, as I say. I really should have covered this in last time's lesson, but I'm still learning this myself. So you'll excuse me if my reading of the documentation sometimes doesn't go in the best order. Um, also, I'm having some trouble because uh, the, the emulators and the um, firmware are still changing. So. Um, it's sometimes things don't work as they should and sometimes the documentation's not as clear as it could be, shall we say? Anyway, um, we'll, we'll, we'll go through it and we'll see what we can do. Now, if we want to recolor the ULA, it's really, really easy, as I say, far easier than what we looked at last time. So effectively, the standard colors within the Spectrum Next will actually do the ULA job. Now, all we need to do to recolor the ULA is we just need to write new colors to the palette. Now the first 16 palette entries will effectively be the foreground and then the next 16 will be the background and this allows us to have both the dark and bright colors replaced. So I've set the foreground and the background to the same color set. You can see the color set just here. So the first eight colors are the dark colors and then the next eight colors are the bright colors. Now I'm not sure if it's possible to do the flashing colors. I kind of think not but I never use them anyway so um, we're not going to worry about that. So all I'm doing in this case is I'm using this palette definition, this one byte per color palette. I'm using it for both the foreground and for the background. Now the foreground's at color entry zero and the background's at color entry 16 here. Now the background's also called the paper in some cases, but anyway, I think you understand what I mean. So now we've got this pause here and then we've got this definition of a window and you saw that that made the screen much smaller. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, I guess if you were just trying to save memory and use bits of the screen memory for other purposes, but I think a more interesting purpose is probably gonna be these which didn't work. Now they should work according to the documentation. Maybe they should, it seems to imply they would, but they don't work. Now they're supposed to scroll the screen, so you would have a hardware scrolling option here. So I think the idea would be you would probably reduce the size of the screen by one tile in the X and Y axis and then redraw that one tile when it wasn't visible by defining a smaller window. Now the window writes, we write to 1A here and we write four times for the, the axes of the window here. So we're doing 32 to 128 on the X and Y axis here. So that's what we're doing there. And we're just pausing. Now the defining of palettes is exactly the same as before. We write the palette entry we want to change to register 40 of the um, Spectrum Next hardware and we write the new entries to 41. And we're setting an alternate transparent color because magenta was messing up otherwise. So nothing too exciting there, I guess. As I say, really, this should have been in last week's lesson, but you know, poor planning and me kind of rushing these tutorials out. I don't have any prepared in advance. I, don't, I haven't got any ordering worked out. It's just, I understand this enough to write a tutorial on it. Let's go. So that's, what, that's what's coming out now, unfortunately. Anyway, so the second one, the lower screen, let's have a look at that. So we're just loading up and you saw the screen draw there and then we've got the hello world message here and we've got the window 
and the window actually scrolls. So the scrolling does work in low res mode, but it doesn't work on the classic ULA. And curiously, they're the same registers in both cases and the documentation seems to imply they should work. But as I say, they don't. So I'm not sure what that means. So anyway, um, let's just put in a halt at this point here, this point here, sorry. Because we saw a bit too much there, things were pretty fast. So what we're doing here is we're drawing the screen and then we're changing the colors. I didn't want those hello worlds there, but anyway. So um, you can see the colors and we can, we've can we got this Chibi Akamas logo and hopefully you can see it looks exactly the same as the one here. And the, and the reason for that is that we exported it with this ZX Spec Next option here. And then we've got this Save Low Res Layer option just here. So we can export our screen and use it in this kind of example. Now, just to be clear, this is a 256 color mode, but as it currently stands, Acre Sprite Editor is only a 16 color sprite editor. I may change it at some point in the future, but at the moment that limitation is in place because to be honest, this was written for the old 8-bit systems, not for these more advanced machines, these modern machines and for DOS machines. So as I say, it's only capable of 16 colors at the moment, but I may change that later on. So anyway, that's where we got our Chibi Akamas logo here. So the screen's 128 by 96 and each line is 128 wide bytes. That is, of course, because each entry is 256 colors. Now, if we just run again, if you look how the screen draws, I've actually put a lot of slowdown in. So you saw, saw it draw line by line in consecutive order. And the point I was making there is that the screen is, a, is stored in memory in a normal consecutive order. So very straightforward there, which it makes a pleasant change from some systems. Now, rather oddly, and I think this just comes down to things like the stack and the firmware, um, and the firmware variables, the memory for the screen is split into two separate areas and each is hexadecimal 1800 in size. So the first one is at the standard screen location at 4000 and then the next one is um, slightly after that at 6000 and that is also 1800 in hexadecimal. Now when it comes to the screen file that I used in this example, it's just one continuous file. If I can find it, there it is, that's the sample screen. So I just did two LDIRs, the um, setting the HL just once, and the first one did the first 1,800 bytes, and the second one did the second 1,800 bytes. So pretty straightforward there. Then I just set the color here, printed some test strings here because I've got this um, test code. Um, then I set up the palette in exactly the same way as we've seen before. Next, I set the window up using register 1A, the same register as in this example here. The ULA and the low res mode are the same window in effect. And then I use these scrolling registers, which did actually work this time, because as I said before, they didn't work here. Don't know why. So we just can set an offset in pixels here, screen resolution here, and so on and so forth. So, you know, pretty straightforward stuff. Now, how are we doing the print string? Well, if you saw my 256 color mode with the new Spectrum Next screen mode, it's almost the same, not quite, but almost. So if we look here, we've got a command called get screen pause, and this is pretty straightforward. We need to multiply the Y coordinate by 128 because the screen is 128 bytes wide. So we're going to do this by a bit shift. So what we do is we load the Y position into H, we set the other byte to, to zero, and then we rotate once to the right, shifting the any carried bits into the low part. This effectively effects a multiply of by 128 very quickly. We then add the B part to the low byte and we store the low byte in L here because the high byte was already in H and this has set the basic offset of the screen. Now we need to deal with that split into two parts. The basic screen is at hexadecimal 4000 here and we're going to do that by setting bit 6 of H which will set it to at least 4000 and then what we need to do is we need to see if we're below the 48th line of the screen where the split occurred. If there's no split we just return if there is a split, then we need to add if the effectively hexadecimal 800 to the coordinate. And we do this by adding 08 to H here, and that will effectively move us down to the second screen base. And that's really all there is to it. When we get to the end of a line, all we need to do is add 128 to move down a line, and that will calculate the new position for the start of the next line. So all I'm doing here is taking the L register, adding 128, storing it back, and then seeing if we've actually caused an overflow there. If we've not, then we return. If we have, we just need to increment H to compensate. So that allows us to move down the line. This code we're not gonna go into, we've covered it before. This, all of this code is almost identical to the 256 color one. So 
we're now using this get screen pos to convert a cursor x y position to a screen memory location eight pixels wide eight pixels tall and so we're just converting a cursor position according to that for our get screen pos command our font uses one bit per pixel so eight bytes per character so we just need to work out the accumulator and calculate the character offset within the bitmap font there's no characters below the space character 32 so we subtract 32 and that will get our position in the bitmap font and then we just need to read in a single byte here we loop around shifting one bit off a time to convert the one bit per pixel font to an eight bit per pixel for our screen and we just write all the converted pixels to the screen just here the screen is calculated in hl by the get screen pods command. Now, once we've done a single line, we need to restore HL because HL would have been converted to be the right hand side of the font. We need to be moved back to the left hand side. And then we're just using git next line here, which is doing the adding of 128. And that will work just fine to calculate the next line for the font. And then finally, we're just seeing if we've got to the end of the line. Actually, I would need to change that, I guess, would I? Actually, I think this should be 16 here. I'm copying the code to exactly here. We'll just have to deal with that. Um, and then we're just calling the new line command if we've got to the end of a line. So this is our code to actually do the, calc the printing of the character font. And it you know, works reasonably well. It should be enough if we needed to do any testing. Although I say this mode, you know, it's quite a curiosity. I, I think it came from the ZX Uno originally, maybe. But um, I say the Spectrum Nexus has got more advanced modes. Now, the only thing that I do think it could be quite useful for is if you were doing a game with parallax, you could use this for your background layer and then you could use the new layer two mode for the foreground, the much higher resolution one. And then you could scroll them separately because as we saw, we can scroll this quite easily. So that's, um, that's something that it could certainly do for us. And I think it'd be something that's quite interesting. Anyway, there we go. So that's the um, two new options we wanted to discuss today. We've got the recolored ULA here, and we've got this low res unpronounceable mode. Very nice. So we're going to be looking at Spectrum next again in the future. I'm already working on hardware sprites and um, tile map. It's taking a little time because, as I say, I'm still struggling a little bit with the hardware, but things are going reasonably well. Anyway, if you've liked this, please like and subscribe and all that nice stuff. Thanks for watching today and goodbye. If you enjoyed today's lesson, please check out my website. We've got tutorials, source code, and development tools for 6502, 68000, and Z80 systems, and a lot more systems coming in the future. We're going to be covering the 8086 and the ARM and a few other things as well going forward. And if you've liked this lesson, if you've got questions, comments, or suggestions on how it could be made better, please consider signing up to my forum. It's free, of course, and you can come along here and you can make suggestions, you can ask questions. And if you've got assembly projects you're working on, please let us know what they are. Maybe show off a few screenshots. Tell us what things you've found interesting or what tricks you've come up with, because we'd love to know about it. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.